Arpaio is going to love to enact some revenge against this UC Santa Barbara team. Daryl Jelinas, Tim Marion, in Caldwell are officials, and Traore wins it back for UCSB, and we are off and running. The Gauchos, the favorite in the Big West this season. They were picked to repeat as conference champions. Trying to do it for what would be a third time in four seasons as Josh Pierre-Louis able to scoop it up and in. You see the starting lineups presented by Ontario International Airport. No surprises there in the starting five for Santa Barbara. They've been really consistent with that lineup. Josh Pierre-Louis, he in his senior year is having a fantastic season. Caleb Smith, in only his second start for the Highlanders, is putting up massive points. Had his first start against Idaho, first double-digit game, had another one against Irvine. He's going to be counted upon big time in today's match. And they made a late change here as this one's going out of bounds to UC Riverside. They announced Caleb Smith at a star, as a starter to us pregame, but in fact it is Isaiah Moses who is starting. We thought a bit strange that Moses would be coming off the bench as the leading scorer for UC Riverside. He, along with Will Tattersall, the most consistent starters on this Highlanders team all season long. Well, Barrington Hargris brings it forward here for UC R R Riverside. They lost by seven to UC Irvine on a Thursday at the Brent Event Center. Really tight first half in that, that one, and then UC Riverside went cold shooting the basketball and couldn't overcome it as Moses has the first points for the Highlanders. Moses in his first season here in the IE, averaging 13 points per game. He has been an offensive threat all season long, coming in from the College of Southern Idaho. High school Gatorade Alaska player of the year. He is a talented point guard. Traore attempted just his third three-pointer all season. And Moses, the only player on this UC Riverside roster, averaging double figures. And he scoops that one up and in past A.J. Mitchell. We talk about Johan Traore averaging 65% from the field. Anytime this man gets his hands on the ball, he is buckets galore. Land backdoor, Mitchell up and in. And we're tied up as A.J. Mitchell is able to get free. Last year's Big West Player of the Year, one of the most electric players in the Big West. I mean, he, and he keeps getting better every single season, Nick. His freshman year, he was freshman of the year, all Big West second team. Obviously the reigning Big West Player of the Year, and arguably the best NBA prospect the Big West has. Kyle Owens rolls in a triple for UC Riverside, and he can get hot from outside, had five threes, when the Highlanders nearly beat UCLA last month. And he's been a player that this team relies upon. In terms of the three ball, Nick, they take 27 shots from outside of the arc. They make about eight per game. The question is which Riverside team is going to come through today. They rely heavily on that three-point basket. They make more threes than anybody in, in the Big West. They also take more threes than anybody in the Big West. As Hargris brings it forward, three-point lead for UC Riverside in the early going. Owens tries again and barely caught the rim on that one. Bland's got the rebound on the weak side. Hargris, one of the biggest reasons as to why the assist-to-turnover ratio for UC Riverside is as good as it is. Triar lost the handle. Owens onto the deck. And we got to tie up a jump ball. And it'll go the other way in favor of UC Riverside. Pierre Louis getting down on the ground along with Owens to force that tie up. Josh Pierre Louis, a guy who does so much for UC Santa Barbara. He's capable of going off. He can get you 20 plus points, but they don't need him to do that night in and night out to be successful. He, he does everything for this Gaucho team. He leads the team in steals. He's one of their best rebounders as a guard in his senior year. He is going out there on quite the campaign. And he is having a career year and an offensive foul. An illegal screen by UC Riverside, Isaiah Moses. He's quite surprised by that call, too. UC Santa Barbara started the year 0-2, but should note that they did not have A.J. Mitchell for either of those two games, then reeled off seven of their next eight, and then lost by 14 Thursday night up at UC Davis. That one tight through the first half, and Elijah Pepper had a great game for the Aggies. 
Elijah Pepper continues to have the kind of season he's capable of having, he may end up being the all-time scorer in the Big West. Athletic move by Josh Pierre-Louis, levitating in the air for two. And he is fearless. The senior from Plainfield, New Jersey, slashes into the paint, comes up big often anytime he drives down the middle. He had a season-high 20 points in the Big West Tournament semifinal game last year. Isaiah Moses is cooking early for UC Riverside, already with six. Mitchell probing at the other end. Anderson spots the triple. Off the heel, the rebound for Tattersall. Anderson, the top three-point shooter in the Big West at 41%. And he's got such a quick release. It's just a matter of milliseconds before he gets the ball up by the cylinder. Caleb Smith feeding Tattersall. And that should be a goaltend, and it is. Pierre Louis getting his hand up in there to affect the shot. So count the basket. And UC Riverside's got a five-point lead as we... Well, both teams playing much better at home than on the road. Now between these two teams, just one win in a true road game. That goes to UC Santa Barbara. And they've been great at the Thunderdome, 5-1 and one up in Isla Vista. UC Riverside, 4-1 and one here at home. Matia Belich on the floor for UC Santa Barbara as A.J. Mitchell earns a trip to the foul line. And it's Nate Pickens committing the foul, who just checked in for the first time out of the timeout. Nate Pickett's had a fantastic game against Idaho in the last home stint for the Highlanders. Had some very athletic moves out of Arizona representing Dream City Christian. There are a couple of players coming out of that high school program in Arizona, both on the Highlanders and the Gaucho. And we got Jalon Martinez for UC Riverside. And then Traore also played there. He also spent some time at Prolific Prep in Napa as well. But... You're going to see guys across the entire nation playing Division I basketball who went to Dream City Christian out in the desert. As Mitchell goes two for two, makes it a three-point ball game. And Mitchell became the 32nd Gaucho in program history to score over 1,000 points recently. Yeah, doing it early on in his junior season at that. Smith off the roll. Into the corner, Tattersall's three. Smith flies in for the offensive board. And he's out of bounds. UC Santa Barbara will take the basketball back. Good effort there from Smith. Couldn't stay in the court of play. Great effort, great hustle, and he's been getting a lot of minutes here. Had his first start a couple of games ago against Idaho. Put up double digits in points both games. And it's nice to see local products, especially here from the Inland Empire. Rancho Cucamonga representing. Played at Damien High School for former Highlander Mike DeLuke. Now, legend in Southern California high school basketball coaching. Jalen Martinez checks in, replacing Kyle Owens. Mitchell, the baseline pull up, in and out, rebound Tattersall. And you're going to need Martinez and Gristy to stay out of foul trouble because both players, 6'11, two of the biggest bodies on the Highlanders, going up against, up against Triari, who's been a phenom since coming to the Big West from uh, his time over at Auburn last year. Moses misses from the floor for the first time. Meanwhile, it's Mitchell going coast to coast. Look at the speed from A.J. Mitchell to make it a one-point game. 6'5 point guard. Unbelievable that he's only a junior. And he's got NBA written all over him. Such confidence. And great genes. His father played collegiately at Norfolk State. Moses knocks down another bucket, though, for UC Riverside. He's got eight. Isaiah Moses, originally from Anchorage, then came down to play Juco ball at the College of Southern Idaho, was an All-American at that level, and out his first year at the Division I level. As we got an offensive foul going against Pierre Louis, and UC Riverside will have the basketball. Moses was the number two scorer on a very competitive Southern Idaho team. Jason Fontenet, the second, checks in for Santa Barbara. Hargris back in for UC Riverside. Highlanders shooting the basketball well to start. Six of nine from the floor. And they're going to need to be efficient with the ball, Nick, because we do know that Santa Barbara, anytime they do have it, as a team, they shoot over 50%. Now 51.5, best in the Big West and 10th in the entire country. Hargris, the rhythm three, loops out, and the rebound for Treori. Pickens able to impede Mitchell, and now Traore right at the free throw line for two. 
The Auburn transfer has been maybe the biggest impact transfer in the Big West this season, about 17 points per game and hitting at a 65% clip. He's happy being over here in the West Coast. Last season in Alabama for Auburn, he played in 25 games, but only managed to score just under three points. The Tigers used him, but not like the Gauchos are using him offensively. He's having a great season. Gauchos back in the half court after the miss from Moses. Mitchell spinning into a double team, finds Traore this time a little bit deeper, and he's off the mark. So he made from 15, misses from 17. Still a one-point lead for UC Riverside. Argress needs some help, finds it in Moses. High usage so far for Isaiah Moses. Probing against Mitchell to the baseline. Martinez from 19 feet, and the rebound collected by Fontenet. The 6'6 freshman, another player from Phoenix, Arizona. His father, standout guard at Oregon State. He's also a state champ during his time in high school. Nate Pickens just picked up his second foul. And it looks like he's going to have to come out, and Luke Turner will get his first appearance. And also Ben Christie will check back in. Evans Caputo checking into the game. Well, never mind, checking back up. And yeah, he came in, and then they decided, you know what? No, <laughs> let's keep Traore in there. It's a mulligan on that substitution. Anderson, the step back. Left it short, rebound Hargress. Open, Smith. And the rebound for Traore. Fontenet forward. The defense back for UC Riverside. Traore, this step through and finishes with the left hand. UC Santa Barbara has their first lead since the opening moments of the game. A solid bucket and a solid move. Very finesse oriented by the big man who is utilizing. He normally uses his back to the basket, but we could see him able to drive from outside of the arc as well. Had a season high 25 Thursday night up at Davis. Isaiah Moses continues to perform though. He is five of seven from the floor, give him 10, and the Highlanders toggle back in front. Averaging 13 a game. He is currently residing in Splash City with the number of buckets he's converted on. Belich right at Smith. All kinds of physicality and a tough finish there for the 6'7 Serbian, Matija Belic. Talk about the history between these two teams. He had a career high against UC Riverside in the Big West semifinals last season. Uh, eight points for him there. He's been a very solid reserve player. Here's Turner. Or excuse me. It was Turner getting the offensive rebound off the miss from Christie and Turner. Able to draw a foul underneath. Is the fact that they protect the ball so incredibly well. A turnover rate of less than 10 tops in the Big West and among the top in the country. Yeah, 10th in the entire nation there in that department. Hargress has to go all the way to Christie near half court. Bland got a hand in there, but Hargress scampers out there to recover that loose ball. And UC Riverside not only playing UCLA as Mitchell knocks that out of bounds. He's trying to say that went off of Hargress's leg, but the Highlanders will keep it with nine on the timer. But not only did they play UCLA, played at Utah, at North Carolina, at Washington State. Some big-time opponents in the first couple months of the season. And what that's going to do is get this team battle-tested and ready for Big West Conference play. Because at the end of the day, in the mid-majors, it's conference play that matters more than what your strength of schedule is. Hargress. Can't find the bounce and the rebound for Traore. He just floated in the air for that rebound. Now you could argue it's not just about conference play. It's, it's about one week in Henderson, Nevada. And everything building up to that week as Traore thunders inside. And you just see how big and physical he is. 6'11", 235. Such a force to be reckoned with. But, you know, we haven't talked much about the other transfer on this team. Number 11, Ben Stolzberg. Six foot four sophomore from Northridge coming in from Creighton. While he does act as a backup for, for AJ, he's also going to be another player that this team is going to put a lot of offense through. Hargress nailing a triple to tie it up. Second made three of the night for UC Riverside. 
Mitchell draws a double, and Traore left it short in the lane. Hardress the rebound. And that time, UC Riverside collapsed on Traore. Him and Mitchell each with six points to lead Santa Barbara. Moses leading the way for all sides with 10 points. Hargress levitates and finishes. Got quite the backcourt tandem on this UC Riverside team between Hargress and Moses. Not only one of the best backcourts in the Big West, but arguably one of the best backcourts in Division I. Stolzberg probing. Trying to dump it off inside. Turner on the deck. And a jump ball. This will stay at this end for Santa Barbara. It's that hustle we were talking about. Stolzberg was a three-star recruit coming out of Notre Dame High School. That institution itself has produced so many phenomenal athletes. We're talking even baseball. I think that's where John Carlos Stanton went, if I'm not mistaken. He did. And right there in Sherman Oaks, back in the San Fernando Valley. Right down the road from you and I. And CSUN, they just got a big win at, uh, at Long Beach State. And they, they're having a great season. I think already at 10 wins early on. The win at UCLA, not quite two weeks ago. Long Beach State beat Michigan early on this season. Big West is a very competitive conference. So they reset the shot clock to nine, so Mitchell's got to get it up. And the rebound for Hardress. Last time in this gym when these teams met, Mitchell was held to just eight points. More than made up for it in the Big West semifinals, though, with 28. In that Big West semifinal, a, a game in which Highlanders fans would love to forget. Moses feeling it. Now he just took Traore off the dribble. And you can see him shoot a look to his bench. Say they can't guard me. I mean, he's nearly at his season average. And we still have eight minutes and change to go in the first half. A dozen for Moses. Mitchell open. Too strong. Offensive rebound, Traore. And he finishes. That is another element where this Gauchos team has been effective. They, the rebound margin all season long, they've had over nine rebounds as a, as a rebound margin. And obviously when you get somebody as athletic and tall, 6'11", as Triari, no surprise there. But a lot of the rebounds also coming in from Josh Pierre-Louis. They rebound very well as a team. Traore, six boards to go along with eight points already. Moses has this one come to him after it was deflected by Mitchell. Shot clock winding down. Hargress steps into the three short as he had the long arms of Traore right in front of him. Fontenet looking inside for Traore. Knocked away inside by Christie, but a recovery. Too strong off the glass. It pinballs its way back. Now Fontenet, the straightaway three, and you see Santa Barbara's back in front. Fontenet, true freshman. From up near Santa Barbara. And he's out of Arroyo Grande. Up in that Central Coast area. First made three tonight for the Gauchos. Talked about the apple not falling too far from the tree. I said it earlier. His father was a standout playing for the Beavers of Oregon State. Moses, the step back three. And he sent A.J. Mitchell onto the court in the process with the crossover. Moses is feeling it so far. He's got 15. He Mitchell, not, kick out Bland, three ball. Missed it poorly. Moses, the rebound. Not starstruck by the fact that he's going against the reigning conference player of the year. Moses himself making an argument, a strong argument, as to why he might be the better guard between the two. Mitchell picking him up here. And a reach and foul on Mitchell after the handoff. Takes us to a timeout on the floor. And Isaiah Moses. It's a one of the best in the conference, and so far he has the edge. Again, 15 points on 7 for 9 shooting. A.J. Mitchell with 6 points, but you don't want to poke the bear, or in this case, the gaucho. Islanders basketball out of the timeout. 25-23. Tattersall checks back in, along with Kyle Owens and Caleb Smith. Hargris and Moses remain out there, and Hargris able to hunt and peck his way for two. 
strong take, going to the left side, utilizing the backboard. Brilliant layup by the redshirt freshman from Inglewood, California. A lot of buckets on the interior at both ends so far. And here's Mitchell attacking the cup and finishing for two. Might have been the broadcaster's curse. I said it earlier, he was kind of quiet so far, has his eighth point. Mitchell in his career against UC Riverside, averaging 20 points and five assists per game. One of the more interesting statistics that I'm looking at, the Gauchos are a team that are very effective in transition. No fast break points so far in this first half. A point of emphasis for Mike Magpio, I'm sure. Moses left it well short there as he had to take it into the air. Now Mitchell coming back the other way and a reach in foul. Hardress thought he got his hand in there cleanly, but I think instead the foul is going to go against Kyle Owens, who is in front of Mitchell. Non-shooting foul. This is a UC Santa Barbara team. Going to the NCAA tournament last year. Picked his favorites this year, but... Obviously, they bring back guys like Mitchell, Pierre-Louis, bring in Traore, but there's some key guys that they had to replace from last year's team. You know, Miles Norris, he's now on a two-way contract with the Hawks. Calvin Wissert, Ajari Sani, they're playing overseas. Andre Kelly, the yep. former Cal player. Uh, that's a lot of guys that are no longer on this UC Santa Barbara team, and, and so far, they've been just fine. And he, most teams... We'll go through a transition when you lose so many talented players like that. But they've continued to reload. They've got the best playmaker, arguably the best shooter in Cole Anderson. You got one of the top newcomers in. And to think, they almost pulled Zach Clements from Kansas as well. They would have been a devastating team with him, but somehow he managed to stick around in Lawrence. Jalen Martinez into the ball game for UC Riverside, working against Evans Capruto, who also just checked in, and Martinez gets the bounce. The redshirt junior out of Vallejo by way of Dream City Christian in Glendale, Arizona. Martinez hasn't played a lot as of late, just 10 minutes over the last couple games. He's getting some early minutes in the first half here. He's such a big body, and the Highlanders only have a couple of players above 6'11". They're going to need as many big bodies as they can going, going up against players like Caprio and Traore. Kick out, Belich, and Smith's got the rebound. No second chance points for Santa Barbara. I haven't seen too much of Josh Pierre-Louis. He sat down a good portion of this first half. He is a Swiss Army knife for this Gauchos team. He's Defensively, got, offensively, everywhere. He's got two fouls. There's a block from behind. Mitchell on Tattersall. Mitchell into the corner. Anderson. Hargress recovers. There is Pierre-Louis. And he will go to the free throw line. Timeout on the floor. Free throws for Josh Pierre Louis when we come back. UC Riverside leading Santa Barbara. 53 after his first six years coaching at UC Santa Barbara. Winning percentage, the best in program history. Last season, 27 wins, which was tremendous. This season, again, they set a program record with 123 points against Bethesda. He's done a fantastic job. I can't believe it's already been seven years for him. Former associate head coach at Arizona under Sean Miller. And the Big West Coach of the Year a couple years ago. And he got rewarded with a contract extension as well. Pierre Louis goes two for two. And Stolzberg checks back in and replaces Pierre Louis. They brought him back in just for a little bit. He had those two early fouls. And now potentially that's the last we'll see of him here in the first half. Two point lead for UC Riverside as they're shooting 52%. On the heels, of course, of Isaiah Moses, who's having a fantastic first half. Smith with a banked-in three. And he's been one of the best three-point shooters this year for UC Riverside. And he's got double figures in back-to-back -back games coming in. Whether or not he called it, the bank is open for deposits. Got here red-shirted last year as a true freshman. Now, like Barrington Hargris, factoring into the rotation as Traore knocks down the mid-range jumper. He has had that shot dialed in, and now in double figures with 10. It's amazing. He not only can score easily underneath the bucket, but that pull-up jumper from 15 feet has been solid. Here's a pull-up from Hargris, but a tough shot there. It looked like Schultzberg was right in his face. And now Bland is fouled at the other end. He 
he's been relatively quiet in this game. He contributes in so many ways, both offensively and defensively. Getting his first opportunity at opening his scoring account in today's game. Playing from just outside the Twin Cities. He had a triple-double. And they took on Bethesda in the non-conference. 12 points, 13 boards, 10 assists. He's the first gaucho under Joe Pasternak to do it. Golden State Prep over in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Had the most dunks in a season, setting a high school record. I didn't know that was something that got tracked. <laughs> neither in, in neither high did school. I. Neither did I, which is why I wanted to make note of it. Trying to make it a two-point game. Ni Olabade and Vladimir Salaridze check in for the first time for UC Riverside. Touch here for Olabade. Seven on the timer. Olabade inside. And the rebound for Blant. It's a solid take, just hit it off the wrong end of the window. Stolzberg fronted in transition. Bland inside. And we are tied up at 32. Ariel Bland is able to muscle his way in on Vladimir Salaridze. Big body, 6'7 at 230 pounds. Made effective use of his physical capabilities. Alabade missed it well short off the driving kick from Hargris. And now Santa Barbara looking to take the lead back. They go to Traore. And right in on Kyle Owens. And Santa Barbara getting that inside positioning there last couple times down the in his body, his ability to convert from 15 feet and on. And he's been a joy to watch. Physical and finesse. A 7 nothing run here for Santa Barbara to take the lead. And nearing a bucket and a half to go in the first half. I haven't called Moses' name since he made that three recently. And off the heel, offensive rebound for Owens. Hargris off the crossover. Off glass with the left hand. Able to take on Cole Anderson and we're tied. Put Cole Anderson on skate. Some of that playground ball. Effective use of the dribble. Going to the left side. Huge bucket for Hargris. Snaps that 7 nothing run. Mitchell draws a double team. Traore had it ripped away by Hargris. Moses to his left. And he finds Moses outside the three-point line. 45 seconds left in the half. UC Riverside will reset. Very unselfish play by Hargris. Would have thought he would have tried to draw a foul going to the basket. Opted to kick it out outside of Moses instead. Turner inside, blocked by Traore. A 6'11 yep. big man coming across the lane. And Santa Barbara can effectively hold for the final shot here. Felt that block all the way from over here, Nick. Just his third block of the season. Hard to believe a guy at 6'11 with his kind of athleticism to only have a couple coming into this game. Now the player on the Gauchos leading in blocks is Josh Pierre-Louis. Right, here's Mitchell to the corner. Anderson, the quick trigger, and trails the triple. And that takes us to the end of the first half. Santa Barbara closes it on a 10-2 run. Credit Union. See, both teams taking care of the basketball, but did you notice that on the right there? No free throw attempts in the first half for UC Riverside which is utterly insane if you ask me. This is a team that normally gets to the stripe quite frequently. Although they haven't been shooting the lights out from the charity stripe, so maybe that is a good thing. And not a lot of fouls for either side in the first 20 minutes as we get the second 20 minutes underway. Moses has Traore on him. Trying to dump it off for Owens, able to recover against Bland. Christie trying to get in there, falls down with the basketball. And this is going to be a jump ball. And so possession will go to UC Santa Barbara. A quiet first half for Christie. No points, no boards. And yeah. he's had two really good games against 
Irvine had 18 with five threes against Idaho, put up 19. If he can get loud from beyond the three-point line, it's going to be really tough to contain the Highlanders today. Pierre Louis dealt with foul trouble in that first half, and he starts with a deuce. He's got eight points, only played eight minutes in the first half because he picked up two fouls early. Such a tough player to defend. He comes in down the lane like a swashbuckling pirate. He's got four double-doubles this season, does Pierre Louis. Now Owens trying to wrangle free of Traore. Draws a double from Anderson. Tattersall steps into the three. Rebound for Bland. Mitchell. Up and under move. A.J. Mitchell. A little bluff back to the corner. And then accelerated back under the basket. Santa Barbara has got its largest lead. His 10th point of the game. And you can't run the risk of letting him get hot. Because if he gets hot, it's going to be a long afternoon here. First time we've had a three-possession difference for either side. Islanders have made just one field goal from the floor in about the last five and a half minutes going back towards the first half. And we got free throws coming for Kyle Owens. Traore getting over the top there. Only the first foul against Traore. And so now Kyle Owens heads to the free throw line. Three points in the first half for the fifth-year man out of Calabasas. And his second year with UCR after transferring in from Montana. Here in the IE getting his MBA, so he's going to have a stellar business career at the time, at the end, the conclusion of his collegiate career. Two-for-two trip for him there to make it a five-point ball game. On that foul, Pierre-Louis was <laughs> looking at the official thinking that they might have called him for the foul. That would have been his third, but fortunately for him, no foul called on him. Such an explosive move driving down the lane. Mitchell trying to find Pierre-Louis, but Moses has the steal. Hargris with nine points in the first half. Muscles inside, kick out. Gristy drills the triple. First points. For the Australian, Ben Christie, and the Highlanders are back within two. Success breeds upon success. We said in the game against Irvine, he had five three-pointers. This is his first. He is clutch from outside of the arc. Dump off for Bland. Goes right at Christie and draws a foul. A couple of free throws coming for Ariel Bland. You see Santa Barbara, they were shooting near 40% for a while in the first half. Now they're up over 50% for the game, and that's been the norm this year for the Gauchos. I mean, the fact that they average the field goal percentage that they do is, is staggering, but it's no surprise when you have four of your starters above 50%, with Triori over 65. First one down for Bland. He's two for three at the foul line now. And a one-for-two trip for Bland. And the deficit is three for UC Riverside. Both these teams trying to avoid starting conference play in an 0-2 hole. Highlanders have done well to avoid that as of late. If they drop to 0-2, it would be the first time in five years. And Tattersaw a little bit strong off the glass against Anderson. Land trying to find Mitchell, and he does. The mid-range. Short. Flying in. Traore. Inside. Draws another foul. So Christie picks up two fouls here in the last couple minutes. And more free throws coming for Santa Barbara. And that might be a troublesome statistic right there because he just started feeling it hitting a three on the, from the baseline just moments ago. 6'11 body going up against another 6'11 body. And Christie against Traore. Originally from central France before coming stateside to play high school ball. Yeah. 
played on the U15 and U16 French national team during his time as a teenager. He's potentially bidding for a third straight 20-point game after he had 12 in the first half. But he misses both free throws here. And another foul here against UC Riverside as Bland got in for the offensive rebound. Such a monster board. Absolutely gobbled that one up. And that's where this team is very effective. Rebounding the ball both on the offensive side and the defensive side. We said it many times in the first half. They have a rebound margin of over nine making them one of the best rebounding teams in the Big West. One of the best in the country, top 25 in the nation with that rebounding margin. Kyle Owens picked up the foul. He's going to check out. Jalen Martinez is on along with Caleb Smith for the Highlanders. Evans Capruto, the Kenyan native, checks in. He's banging bodies there on the post. Here's Mitchell on the pull-up, and he drops it in. Nice little floater for A.J. Mitchell. He's got a dozen. It's as if he just levitated ever so gracefully in the air on that jump shot. So Triori checked out. Five-point lead for Santa Barbara to steal for Pierre Louis. Crossover into the front court. Belich has to work it out for Anderson. Dumps it off. Caputo off the heel. And the rebound for Smith. Also seen Nate Pickens for UC Riverside. Pickens only played three minutes in the first half because of foul trouble, and he knocks down a three-pointer to pull UC Riverside within two. Not playing many minutes, but making a huge impact on that baseline trifecta. Out of bounds to UC Riverside. Caputo couldn't hold on, and we'll take a timeout. Tight one here in Riverside. Santa Barbara, their first two. Big West games are on the road. They won't get their first home game until this coming Thursday. They're going to welcome in UC San Diego. Two-point lead for the Gauchos, early stages, second half. Nate Pickens just hit a three moments ago for UC Riverside. And now going to work. A little give-and-go dump off there with Jalon Martinez, and we're tied. Brilliant play from Pickens to get the ball into Jalon Martinez, and you're going to want to get the big man involved in the game offensively. That's going to be a bucket that's going to increase his confidence. Anderson the corner three and the rebound for Smith and Belich went down hard and the official is going to stop play here landing on his left hip. And he is a key contributor coming off of the bench. That's going to be a nasty bruise for Mattia Belich. Uh, he got airborne. You can see him holding his left hip there. He's a tough kid. They, they build him tough in Belgrade, Nick. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, sophomore, he's bounced in and out of the starting lineup this year as Santa Barbara has had occasional injuries they've had to account for, but they're at full strength here today. Stolzberg checks back in, the Creighton transfer in place of Anderson. See Riverside now with a chance to get the lead back, this time down the floor. Pickens going to work, and he's fouled. He went right at Traore. And free throws coming for the sophomore, Nate Pickens. I think he attracted the second foul on Triari. So that's another great bit of tactics to do. Just go at him continuously because he's going to come in and he's going to try to get that block shot. So now Pickens has an opportunity to convert for his fourth and fifth point. Coming off the bench today, he had started the last three games. But he was held without a field goal on a Thursday at UC Irvine. Just 0 for 4 from the floor. And... That was after he had his first career double-double last week against Idaho, 16 points and 11 boards. Such a good game against Idaho. Had a thunderous dunk to get the crowd and the team into it. One for two trip there, but it does give UC Riverside the lead, 45-44. Pickens now defending A.J. Mitchell. Bland. Nine on the timer. Mitchell, offensive foul. Smith able to step up and draw the charge. And Santa Barbara turns it over for just the sixth time tonight. Had 16 turnovers in their last matchup against Davis. The coaching staff love that charge. Fontenet checks in and replaces Pierre Louis.
We've had six ties and nine lead changes in this one and still have more than 14 minutes to play. Shot fake from Pickens. And out of Martinez. Size advantage inside, but blocked from behind by Bland, who was able to recover. Martinez went down, has to hustle back. Meanwhile, in transition, a reset of the feet. Stolzberg can't hit it, and Pickens loses it out of bounds. Smith had that rebound clean for UC Riverside, and the eager Nate Pickens lost it off his leg. He felt a little too froggy, so he jumped from one little pad to the other one, and it's unfortunate because that could have been a good play in transition, but we haven't seen too much again in transition for the Gauchos, a statistical category in which they have excelled in all season long. Moses will check out here. Moses has not scored in quite a while, had those 15 points, had a real heat check moment. Uh, Santa Barbara has taken him out of the game for the time being. By the way, Belich is back in after landing on his hip moments ago. It's not that Moses hasn't scored. He hasn't even taken a shot since the second half has started. Mitchell draws a foul from Jalen Martinez. And so free throws coming for A.J. Mitchell. Now he's an outstanding foul shooter. There's a lot of outstanding things that Mitchell does. Fourth best free throw shooter in the Big West at 86%. Already two for two tonight. And he's got a baker's dozen with that first free throw down. No broadcaster's curse on that free throw attempt. There's no such thing. <laughs> they're either going to make it or they're not. Knocks them both down. And Santa Barbara toggles back in front. And Mitchell will get a breather with Pierre-Louis returning. Starting to heat up from the scoring line. He now leads the Gauchos in points. 14 for him. You got Traore with 12, the two in double figures. Martinez, not a three point threat. Hands off for Pickens. Working against Fontenet. And short at the rim as Traore provided the help defense. And now Fontenet finds Belich the transition three. Too strong. Rebound Turner. Islanders hitting 40% from distance, much better than the 31% they're shooting on the course of the season. Offensive rebound, Martinez, count it, and a foul. A huge play for the 6'11 junior. That's going to get this Islanders crowd into the game. He has an opportunity to connect with one more at the charity stripe, and this game is getting close. Riverside taking the lead, have an opportunity to go up one more bucket, one more point, I should say. An 11th lead change with that basket for Martinez. Now looking to convert the three-point play. Belich picked up the foul, his first. And both teams making some changes here. Anderson returns for Santa Barbara. Owens checks back in for UC Riverside. Jalon Martinez, solid from the charity stripe this season, going 15 for 17. Has been much improved this year. Trying to get his own miss. But a foul against Turner. Caught a piece of Traore. And so Santa Barbara will have the basketball. So basketball to the Gauchos who have fallen a little bit cold here. Have been able to get to the free throw line. Just three of nine from the floor so far in the second half. Mitchell back in the ball game and drills the step back. Little lean, gets some separation. And A.J. Mitchell starting to get going here in the second half. Well, as you have one player in that, a Triari getting a little quiet, you've got another offensive threat in Mitchell getting hot, and these are their two most lethal weapons. Hargress, step back, drills it. Barrington Hargress from 20 feet. That was solid defense there from Pierre Louis, but Hardress gets the separation for two. At some point, you got to realize you've done enough, and you just got to nod your head and go, Well done, young man. Well done. He's now in double figures with 11, and back and forth we go. Mitchell finds an open Anderson. Rebound Turner.
Argress looking for help, finds Pickens. Into the lane, Nate Pickens able to shovel it up and in. Such a solid take, using his body, going through from the left to the right. Taking Cole Anderson downtown, that was a phenomenal drive by Pickens. Highlanders with 15 points off the bench, and there is A.J. Mitchell with another two. Hesitation and the finish at the rack. He's got 18. You said it. He averages about 20 a game against the Highlanders. He is really close to doing that yet again. He had 30 points against UC Riverside in this building two years ago in an overtime game. 25 of those 30 points he had came in the second half. Owens. Shot fake, and he's fouled. Kyle Owens earning a trip to the foul line. Foul going against Ariel Bland, and we'll take a timeout. This one has been tight. Seven ties. Been a big reason as to why Santa Barbara is very much in this game. Right at his season average now. Originally from Belgium, played with their youth national teams, also played in their professional league as well before coming to Santa Barbara. Last year's Big West Player of the Year. It figures to be in that conversation yet again as we get ready to turn the calendar to 2024 in a couple days. A couple of free throws here for Kyle Owens out of the timeout. Owens now up to six points with that make. L.A. native, went to Crespi High School out there in Calabasas. His father, Keith, played at UCLA. And Owens had a huge game against the Bruins. He had five made threes, a season high, 18 points in that one. One of three players for this Highlanders team throughout the season to make five three-pointers in a single game. Of course, the most recent one, Ben Gristy, the other day against UC Irvine. Isaiah Moses, the third of that 3-0 trio. Gristy is back in as it's now a three-point lead for UCR. Mitchell looking for two more. Bland trying to get in there for a tip-in, but it's Hargris coming away with the basketball. Pickens to Turner. Back to Pickens. Tries to take Mitchell off the dribble and commits an offensive foul. That's good disciplined defense from Mitchell. Didn't let him get by. It was just unfortunate because Pickens, you know, tried to get him on the on the turnaround, but slipped, pushed him over. But yeah, no question that that was an offensive foul. So Pickens will check out, picking up his third foul. That'll bring Isaiah Moses back into the game. Or excuse me, Pickens is going to stay on here, and it's Hargris coming out. So Pickens will stay in with the three fouls. And he picks up Mitchell here. Trying to go back door for Mitchell. And he's fouled by Pickens. So back-to-back -back fouls there for Pickens. And probably have to come out of the ball game now. But Mitchell trying a couple of fouls against him. And he will parade himself back to the foul line. Doing a great job getting himself to the charity stripe. And while they didn't have many opportunities in the first half, they're certainly getting there in the second. So Hargress will have to come right back in the game. So Pickens... Unfortunately, has not been able to find a rhythm with the foul trouble. Mitchell stays perfect at the foul line. Back to a one-point margin. There was one moment early in the second half where it was a three-possession game, but otherwise it's been two or less the entire time tonight. And both teams really even in terms of points in the paint, second-chance opportunities. Where the Highlanders have really excelled, though, is their points coming off of the bench. Moses down low, Christie off glass and in. Able to slip through on the f Ben Christie as his second made bucket. That's going to be the third assist of the game for Moses, who's been really quiet here in the second half. Still not a shot from the field. And Mitchell draws another foul. He is just relentless at attacking the basketball. And that is now five fouls that he has drawn tonight. And the defense is going to continue to collapse on him because... The Highlanders realize what a threat he is when he drives down the lane. And he's got so many weapons, too, with plenty of players to kick it off to. Triori, Pierre St. Louis. See Cole Anderson when he's in the game, one of the best three-point shooters in the Big West. Owens just picked up his third foul. Mitchell now 7-for-7 seven seven from the foul line. 
Smith and Tattersall back in for UC Riverside. Owens will come out with those three fouls along with Turner. Mitchell has gone to the foul line as many as 14 times in a game this season. He did that earlier this month at New Mexico. Made all 14 of them. Now eight for eight here. And he pulls Santa Barbara back within one yet again. Up to 21 points now for Mitchell. Moses picks up. Traore on him to step back three. Rims out. Rebound for Fontenet. Nearly had it, but the Highlanders are going to need some more of that from Isaiah Moses. He was so hot in that first half. Got really quiet here in the second. Fontenet. Rebound tip. Moses has it. You see Riverside shooting 50% in the second half, 48% for the game. Smith inside, short hook shot, lips out. Great play, just unfortunate that the ball rattles out. Mitchell bumped by Christie. It's already a ninth team foul against UC Riverside. One and one coming for Mitchell. Santa Barbara has already shot 10 free throws in this second half. We saw 9-19 to play. Mitchell talking with Daryl Jelinus before he gets ready to shoot a ninth and potentially 10th free throw here. Things getting very sketchy for the Highlanders as those fouls are starting to accumulate. Now, so that's four on Pickens, and then Owens and Christie each have three. Something the Gauchos can look to take advantage of. Two more made free throws for Mitchell. It's just been flawless and automatic from the charity stripe. Such an impressive free throw shooter. Perfect 10 for 10. He's had as many as 30 in a game this year. He's going to take his seat on the bench for the time being with 24 points. Tattersall inside working against Anderson. Couldn't muscle it up and in. He had the body on Anderson. It just seems as if he just lost the handle of the ball as it went up. Missed three from Belich, and over the back there is Capruto as Martinez had the rebound. That's the final foul to give for Santa Barbara. Uh, we could be seeing a lot of free throws here the rest of the way with both teams now in the bonus. I feel like we've already seen a lot of free throws in this game. We have seen 25 combined between the two sides. 18 of those for Santa Barbara. And off to Moses. Acrobatic and a late whistle, and he gets the foul call. Did he get it on Pierre Louis? He did. Pierre Louis third. Only one with three for Santa Barbara. And so Moses will have a chance to get his first points in the second half. He had 15 in the blink of an eye in the first half, made seven of his first nine from the floor. Hasn't really attempted that many shots in the second half. That's been the surprising factor for Moses. I mean, he was really feeling it in that first half. Pierre Louis staying in the game despite having three fouls. And he has been their defensive specialist all season long, leading with steals, one of the top rebounders on the team, and the number three scorer. Mitchell checks back in, though. And Moses gets the bounce. He's up to 17 to lead UC Riverside. And the Highlanders are back in front. Belich doesn't seem too bothered by that fall that he took early on. 
Moses the rebound off the miss from Traore, who has been held scoreless in the second half. Seemed like he could get a shot whenever he wanted it in the first half. And they've done a good job preventing him from getting the ball. I mean, he hasn't really even had any attempts. Still sitting on 12 points on 6 for 10 shooting. Harkress on the crossover, hesitates. And a foul against Smith there going for the rebound. And that's going to be a pair of free throws at the other end. So that is the problem now if you're UC Riverside. Even those loose ball fouls are going to start costing you here as Matia Belich will head to the foul line now. And there's so much time left. Eight minutes and one second to go in the second half. Every foul leading to the charity stripe. That could be a problem, especially with the way the Gauchos have been shooting it from 15 feet. And Belich is 81% on the season. Santa Barbara has a team, 71%. That's right in the middle of the Big West. One for two. Smith has the rebound. We're tied at 57. It's definitely been a fun one. I hope nobody goes anywhere. Get up off that couch, maybe get a stretch, go to the fridge, but we've got ourselves a ball game. Big West basketball. Moses drops in the pull-up. And a timeout is called by UC Riverside after the play. Dandies, whether it be here at the Thunderdome and the Big West Tournament, all of them have been outstanding here over the last few years. And another good one in front of us here tonight. We're certainly lucky to be on this call witnessing two very athletic and highly talented teams going at it. We're looking at what the story is. I mean, you've got 15 points coming from the Gauchos. That's been a big and key difference maker between these two sides. Otherwise, if you look up and down the statistics, both teams are relatively even across the boards. Six of the last eight meetings between these two have been decided by single digits. Mitchell, the step back, and he drills it. Got Pickens down. A.J. Mitchell up to 26 points, ties the ball game. An outstanding second half, 18 since the break. Didn't realize we had so many Gauchos fans in attendance. They all love the ankle breaking and Nate Pickens on that play by Mitchell. Moses had one in the first half. Now Mitchell with that one here in the second half. Pickens checking back in with four fouls, by the way, for UCR. And he travels here. Takes us to another timeout here. All tied up, 59 apiece with 7 to 13 on the islands against Hawaii. That'll be a 9 o'clock Pacific time tip. Cal State Fullerton, the runners up in the Big West tourney. What's been interesting about all the teams that have played thus far, Cal State University Northridge has had an impeccable record on the road, as has the beach. A lot of these other teams in the Big West have been much more successful at home, but if you're going to get it done at home and on the road, you're going to be very convincing come March Madness time. More points for A.J. Mitchell. What else is new in this second half? He's got 28, and we've still got 6.38 in the counting clock. 20 in the second half so far for Mitchell as he is leading UC Santa Barbara. He's got him back in front. You mentioned he had a 30-point game against the Highlanders not too long ago, and he's right there, but that was a huge three-pointer for the Highlanders. Kyle Owens giving UC Riverside their seventh made three. They're having one of their best outside shooting nights so far, and they're back in front by a point. And Mitchell will head back to the foul line. Harrington Hargress picking up the foul, just his first. Highlanders lucky there. It was a solid take. It just the rim and the backboard didn't agree with each other on Mitchell's attempt. But once again, he finds himself at the free throw line where he has been outstanding today. Mitchell perfect 10 of 10 at the foul line. And his first miss right there. An uncharacteristic miss for the young Belgian. Missed them both. 0 for 2 trip there for Mitchell, who has scored 17 of the last 18 points for Santa Barbara. Will the tides turn here with six minutes to go in the second half? Hargrest working against the taller Bland brings him out. Gets a return pass from Tattersall. Nine on the timer. Hargrest, the step back, fall away, drills it. Bland all over him, but Barrington Hargrass getting enough space to drop it in. He's got 13. 
Islanders up by three, a huge bucket for the redshirt freshman point guard from Inglewood. And it's been that backcourt all day long for the Highlanders, Nick. I mean, we said it, one of the best backcourts in the Big West, not one of the best backcourts in the country. Pierre Louis flying in, fouled by Martinez. A hard foul there for the big man. And a force Pierre Louis to earn it at the foul line after a whipping pass from down low by Mitchell. Judging by his body language, it looked like he wanted to go for a rim rocker on that one, but Jalen Martinez just stood up in front of him like a wall. Stretching himself out a bit after that one. Nickname is Skip for Pierre Louis. Born in New York City, raised in Jersey. Started his college career at Temple. Uh, now in his fourth year with Santa Barbara. Fifth year super senior. And his third year as a starter for the Gauchos. Moselle Catholic University, one of the premier programs in the, in the Garden State of New Jersey. Uh, he goes one for two. So that was three consecutive misses at the foul line there. One for Pierre-Louis and a couple for Mitchell. Now back to a two-point game. Owens, Fontenet quick to get back to him after he just made a three from straight away. Hargress, another step back and another swish. Feeling himself on that jump shot, his second straight bucket. Highlanders up by four. Hargress up to 15 points as we're inside of five to play. Fontenet was open. Instead, he puts it on the ground, and Bland count it and a foul. That was tough. He had the positioning on Jalon Martinez. Jalon had nothing that he could do on there, and yet another trip to the charity stripe for the Gauchos. A great decision, too, by Jason Fontenet. He passed up the three, able to suck in the defense there on the baseline, and set up Ariel Bland. Very unselfish play by the Gauchos. Watch out! Bland trying to make it a one-point game. Two of four at the free throw line in this one. Only 55% on the season. Now he's able to convert the three-point play. 66-65 UC Riverside. Now Bland sitting on seven points for today's game. You see Riverside, this is a very good offensive performance for them. They average about 69 a game. Owens trying to put them at 69, but he missed the three. Forward it comes for Bland. Going right at Hargress and left it short. Fontenet had the offensive rebound, but it's out of bounds. You see Riverside basketball. Somehow that ball did not get in for Bland. He was right there. Very close. He's going to look back on this game and realize that he missed himself a bunny. With this game being so close, could that have been a make or break basket? We don't know. Four minutes and seven seconds to go. It's been a delightful game. Argress, shot fake. Owens off the dribble. Moses backs it out. Picked up by Pierre Louis. It's going to be Hargress's shot with five on the timer against Fontenet. Hargress spins, falls. Nails another mid-range jumper. That footwork, unbelievable. The spin, the pull-up, the fadeaway. That's getting this crowd right into this ball game. Huge basket by Hargris. Back to a three-point lead. Mitchell draws a double. And he's got to call timeout. Timeout called. We will take one with them. the Gauchos. Everybody else, for the most part, on UC Santa Barbara quiet, but you have a player as talented as A.J. Mitchell. He's going to shoulder, and he can bear the weight of this offense. Three-point lead for UC Riverside, just north of three minutes to go. Pierre Louis gifted some space. Out to Mitchell, trying to tie the game, and he does. It's a new season high for A.J. Mitchell, and we're tied at 68-31. Up. They are doing this on his back. Triori hasn't even factored in the second half. Yeah, no points in the second half for the big man, but Mitchell, I mean, he has been a sensational score, just epitomizing every bit of that word. So all tied up with three to go. Hargress thinks better of the three. Contact, but no foul, and now a foul comes as Hargress charges inside. Mitchell trying to get the charge there earlier in the sequence. 
But Harkris is going to shoot a pair. A little bit shaken up here. He's going to have the opportunity to equalize Isaiah Moses in terms of points if he can convert on both free throws. Mitchell does pick up the foul there, his third. It's Barrington's first trip to the free throw line today. He's made two-thirds of his foul shots this season. Redshirted last season. And it looks like that has paid off for him here. Averaging just about 10 points per game coming in. And now up to 18 with that made free throw. To think what the team could have been had he not redshirted, but I mean, he got a lot of great lessons, a lot of practice against a legendary player like a Zion Pullen, who's having a pretty good career down right now in his season with the Florida Gators. But now this is Hargris and Moses' team. Now Flynn Cameron in the backcourt as well last season for UC Riverside. So they had that luxury to redshirt a guy like Barrington Hargris, and he's showing out now. And he's given UC Riverside two-point lead. Nearly got that deflected off of Mitchell. The Highlander coaching staff hoping that one would go in the direction of UCR. That'll stay here with Santa Barbara. They get it into Mitchell. Looking for more, and he's got more. It's a new career high, 33 for A.J. Mitchell. I mean, you talk about guys getting to a spot. His whole spot is anywhere 18 feet and in, it seems, in the half court. And it doesn't matter how many players you have in front. I mean, he got by one. He had another two or three directly in his face. No problem. Pulls up the lefty with the left-handed jump shot. Tie game. Hargress trying to answer, and he does, able to lay it up and in before Bland can get there. It is the A.J. Mitchell and Barrington Hargress show in the second half. You would have think this would have been a game dominated by the bigs, but it's been all about the guards today. Mitchell somehow missed, and Bland is fouled. Mitchell had a great hesitation move to get to the cup. Bland's going to have to get the two points at the foul line now after he got hit by Moses. 2.05 to play, 13 ties, 17 lead changes in this one. It's never a disappointing game when these two teams meet up against each other. We said it last season during the regular season, it was all Highlanders. The Gauchos got their revenge in that Big West semifinal game on a route to beat Cal State Fullerton, going to the dance. We know that's a game that Mike Magpio has not forgotten. Two coaches who had two of their best seasons ever. 22 wins by Mike, 27 wins by Joe Pasternak. Two of the best coaches in the Big West. Yeah, 27 wins was a program record for UCSB. Bland goes one for two, holds a one-point advantage for UC Riverside. Bland's got eight points. Inside two minutes to go. Moses pulls up. Missed it poorly. Rebound for Bland. He held in the air for an extra moment before letting it fly. And now Mitchell trying to get the lead back for the Gauchos. Traore with the screen. The step back from Mitchell. Short rebound, Tattersall. Very smart play by Hargris. Trying to force Mitchell to the right as he's going left and draining buckets on that side of the hardwood all game long. You see Riverside will call timeout here with 123 for Santa Barbara. Pierre Louis and Mitchell each with a trio of personals. And so here we go. One point lead for UCR. And Hargress will set up shop, picked up by Pierre Louis. It's hero time at the SRC Arena. Who's going to step up and wear that Superman cape? Could it be Hargress? Could it be Mitchell? Moments away from finding out. Solid take by Barrington Hargress, utilizing the right hand, getting the layup. Highlanders up by three. Phenomenal drive by Barrington. What a second half for Barrington Hargress. 14 points since halftime. Mitchell back to work and will head back to the foul line where he's been outstanding. 10 of 12, although he missed his last two. 54 seconds to play. And Mitchell can get it back to a one-point ball game. 
And that ball ever so gently danced on the rim before it fell out. Nearly converting on a three-point play, but Mitchell has been ice water from the free throw line. Although he had, had a streak where he missed two straight. Yeah, he started 10 for his first 10, missed his last two. Drills that one, 74-72. Mitchell improving on a career night for him. Already the sixth time this season in game number 12 that he's eclipsed 20 points. And he's now sitting at 35 to get the Gauchos back within one. Less than a minute to go. Starting to hear the crowd here at the SRC Arena chanting defense. Wanting to see their Highlanders go into the new year with a huge win. And a statement win if they can pull it off. Hargress inside. Levitates and finishes. A solid take against arguably the Gaucho's best defender in Pierre Louis. Career night for Baron. Well, doesn't take a lot of rocket science to figure out exactly who's going to end up with the ball on this possession. The key would be to make sure that Mitchell doesn't distribute to anybody else. Mitchell goes to work. Pulls up, drills another. A.J. Mitchell cannot be stopped here in Riverside. Two more points to pull it back with it. Of course, Hargris has been your guy in the second half. He's two for two tonight on the season. He's near 70%. If there was a statistical category in which he could use some improvement upon, it would be there. But we'll throw those stats out the window because they don't matter at this moment. He's inbounding here, looking for somewhere to go. Finally finds Pickens, gets it back. Interesting that they're giving him enough room and space. And now the foul committed as Moses was getting into the front court by Bland. And now 11.6 seconds left, and Moses will head to the foul line. He is 2 of 2 in this one, 19 points. I mean, if we were playing the clock and the stats, Bland should have fouled Hargris down there, saving some time on the clock and putting one of... The lesser of the two good free throw shooters from this backcourt. As you mentioned, Moses at nearly 82%. Hargris at 67% on the season. Well, perhaps seeing if they could get that 10-second violation in the backcourt. So no timeouts left for UC Santa Barbara. Again, this is one and one here. That was the 19 foul. Either way, Santa Barbara will have their chance here. It will not be more than a one-possession game. Moses had 15 in the first half. And now give them 20. And Mike McPayo will use his final timeout, a 30-second timeout, as they look to the... The Highlanders looking to press up top. Fontenet to inbound. Mitchell right in front of him at the free throw line. Hargress lets him catch it. And Hargress going to commit the foul. They're not going to let them get a three-pointer off. It's a smart play because that's going to bring A.J. Mitchell to the charity stripe where, you know, he's been effective, but they could force another foul, another play. I mean, I think that was a brilliant move by Mike Magpio to have Barrington Hargress foul in there. Uh, that's become one of the new analytical ways to think about closing out games here over the last few years. And a lot of debate among coaches. Foul or not foul up three. UC Riverside elects the foul. Still 8.5 left. And you are talking about putting A.J. Mitchell on the foul line, one of the best foul shooters. No timeouts either way. So UC Riverside is going to have to get the ball in here. Fontenet comes back in. And now Tattersall returns for UC Riverside. The Highlanders up one, eight and a half to go. Obviously a defensive substitution in for Fontenet. Cole Anderson being relied upon for that three ball. Officials talking at the scores table here. Now they're trying to see if both those players, Fonsonet and Tattersall, checked in without a, came out and then back in without a play happening. 
Now, both teams are trying to say that he shot a foul shot. Guy came out, shot the, shot the second foul shot. Guy came back in. And that's not the case here. The officials able to correct that. So Tattersall and Fontenet come back out. Martinez comes on for UC Riverside. And Anderson back in for Santa Barbara. They're going to look to inbound it to their best free throw shooter. Oh, they get it away on Hargris. Hargris gets fouled with that court here by Pierre Louis. 6.2 to go, so that only takes a couple seconds off the clock. Hargrass, 2 of 2 at the line tonight. A career high 25 points. He had scored 14 straight points for the Highlanders up until Moses hit those free throws moments ago. I mean, those two guards have been the key reason as to why this has been such a competitive and close game. Both of them feeding off of each other. 46 combined for Hargress and Moses. So now Tattersall and Fontenet will get to check in for their respective sides. Both teams shooting two free throws. No timeouts. Possession arrow favors the Gauchos. One more sub here. Stolzberg checks in for Traore. And they're certainly going to bring him in for his three-point prowess. Sharpshooter, local kid from Northridge, California. Let's see if UC Riverside tries to foul in the backcourt again, assuming this goes in. It does not. Two-point game, Pierre-Louis Ford. Lost the handle, threw it away in the corner, out of bounds to UC Riverside. A costly turnover by a player that doesn't turn the ball over that frequently. I'm going to take a look and make sure the time is accurate here. Uh, Pierre Louis coming down with a head of steam. Just got a little bit out of control there and lost the handle. This puts the Highlanders in a great position. Up by two, 1.3 seconds. The Gauchos are going to have to foul. You hit those two free throws right there, and you can put this game on ice. 13 ties, 17 lead changes in this one. And outside of one brief moment early in the second half, it's been a two-possession game either way. It's largely been a one-possession game. The, the shot making between Hargress and Mitchell has been outstanding, and both teams just having a fight for every last inch on this court and every last point. And UC Riverside now with the chance. This would be three out of four against UC Santa Barbara. And, and up until a few years ago with Mike Magpio taking over, that was unheard of for this program. No, absolutely. I mean, this, his, the, this rivalry goes back to the 50s, one that's been very lopsided. The Gauchos with 40 wins, the Highlanders only with 13, but those wins are starting to be stockpiled these past couple of seasons, and, well, they're eyeing win number 14 if they could get to themselves to the charity stripe and convert on a couple free throws. So the clock holds at 1.3. Tattersall to inbound in the corner. Hargress and Moses in the backcourt. They get it to Moses. He doesn't get fouled, and the time runs out at UC Riverside. Able to knock off the defending conference champion.